is Saturday, October 14th, and you are watching another episode of You Don't Watch Sports right here on the Fail Grande YouTube channel. I don't have Fail Grande with me today. He's going to be out on the town. Instead, I have what one would call the better of the brothers. <laughs> <laughs> here on the Feo Grande channel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, if, if, if you're just tuning in, I have an ongoing feud with Jazz. <laughs> Jazz, just, just, I'll get to you. I'll get to you later. But right now we have a guest that is the one and only Ibn. Sir, how are you hey. doing today? Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, I'm fine, man. Uh, anything for for you guys, man. Y'all, y'all, you guys are great. <laughs> what is? I know that you are a pretty big sports guy, and Omari refers to it often, specifically football. Um, give us a give us a quick elevator pitch on on who Ibn the sports guy is. Uh, football is my sport, man. I've been a football fan since the Rams in '99 when they won the Super Bowl. Uh, I didn't really truly become a, a football fan until like 2004, I want to say. Mm -hmm. But 99, that was when I started really taking a note of football. Because the first, I remember the first football game I saw was uh, the Super Bowl between the Broncos and the Packers. Yeah, but I didn't know I didn't know what I was looking at. Didn't understand what I was looking at. I was mm -hmm. like eight years old, eight or nine years old. Yeah, I think I have the exact same memory. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, but when the Rams though, when they won the Super Bowl, that was when I started taking a note of it, and I'm like, okay, this is good stuff. But I would say around 2004 was when I started really taking a note of football, expanding, yeah, yeah. Um, now and I will keep up with other sports like basketball, I'll keep up with, and I watch basketball during the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But uh, baseball, uh, I, like 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 my like my boy Omari said, he I, like he said he only watches it when the Cardinals are in the playoffs. I'm the same way. Yeah, the same way. no, uh, I, I think any baseball fan would understand that completely. It's a really long season and it's a long grind. Um, baseball's baseball's a special sport in that way. Um, but but I'm I'm here I'm here to uh, luckily cover cover that end of things. Um, but you know what? It's great either way if you don't know sports, if you don't know baseball that well, because this is you don't watch sports where where our goal is to cover three topics each week that will get you through your week of talking about sports. Sometimes you don't necessarily want to talk about sports, but it's the only thing to do is a small chit chat when you're at work and you're trying to get through the day. Uh, we're going to give you a couple of topics to go over and use in those conversations. You ready to get going, Ibit? Let's do it. Perfect. Perfect. Now, the first one, the number one seed of the day, Kansas City Chiefs now hold the AFC's best record at five and one. But you wouldn't be able to tell that if you heard the audio from the press conferences after the game. Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and everyone involved seems very despondent on the Kansas City Chiefs offense. So I'm concerned, Ibn, should I be concerned about the Chiefs offense for the remainder of the season going into the playoffs if they're already struggling? Okay. Well, see, I have a little expertise on this too because I'm a Chiefs fan too. So um, I used to be a Rams fan. A little, a little backstory on me, a little more yeah. backstory. Used to be a Rams fan until they moved to L.A. Then I just became a fan of football itself. But it wasn't until, like, I want to say 2021, 20, I became a Chiefs fan. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what? You know what? I'll, I'll be a Chiefs fan. They're my team now. So they, they were just good. I guess you can call me a bandwagoner, but whatever. I didn't have a team, so it is yeah. what it is. I mean, it's um, the it's the <laughs> closest proximity team right. with while eliminating Chicago because right, right. St. Right. Louisans aren't aren't going to Chicago teams. It's just not happening. No, not happening. No. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, though. So back to the uh, topic on hand, though. Um, this is how they. This is what they do, man. Uh, every year since Mahomes has gotten here, with the exception of like 2018, they have always started off slow. Always. 
always. And then there'll be like one game where they'll turn it around, be like, be like, they'll get their behinds whooped so much where it'll be like a turning point. Mm-hmm. And then, then they'll take it off and then they'll go to the uh, Super Bowl or the AFC, AFC Championship. But right now, though, they're five and one. You know, like you say, the best record in the AFC. Yeah. Before that, they would always be like, I'd say like two and three or something like that. And then end up going on and didn't never never lost the game after that. But now it's mm-hmm. like now it's like they they they're five and one. And what's carrying the team is the defense. The defense is really good. They've never really yeah. had a defense. It never really had a defense. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a surprising note, right? Like yeah, it, it, yeah. they're they're playing a little bit above expectations. Right, right. They they've never really had a defense since, since Mahomes has been there. So that's what's making them look good. But I I know that they I know they can, I know they can turn it around. I know they can. They, they I'm, I'm, Mahomes, I'm curious. The, the, you know you you hear you hear legend of the the complex playbook that is Andy Reid and Andy Reid offense the 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 the, all the plays and all the trick plays and all of the other things um the 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 offense isn't really falling apart based on turnovers you know it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of punts it's a lot of red zone failures turning into Mm -hmm. field goals Mm -hmm. Um, mm-hmm. it is it, you mentioned that that's consistent kind of with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. I'm curious if that's just from an outsider looking in, if that's just a if that's just a consistency with an Andy Reid offense where it takes a while for the players to get clicked in to those those patterns, those routes, those those complex pieces of his plays. I think I think it does, and also too, you also got to take into the account of the fact that, um, he doesn't have uh, outside of Travis Kelsey, he doesn't really have the types of receivers that he that he really needs to really do anything with. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, is they, it a they, failure they, they, they on the Chiefs lot. if Travis leads in receiving? I think about no, that sometimes no. with, with like. It, is it a failure on an offense when a tight end leads in reception no, yards? No, no, I'm not gonna <laughs> say that because because look at uh uh the Patriots with uh, right. uh Gronk yeah. back in the day. He he led in receiving and, and they they didn't really have receivers for real like that. Right. It was Brady, Brady and Gronk. So um I'm not gonna say it's a failure. It's just he it would be better if they had like a at least a number two type receiver on the team. It's a bunch mm-hmm. of number threes and, and Travis Kelsey. So it would be better if they had at least like a number two because last year they had Juju Smith Schuster. He was he'd be a number two receiver and he's anywhere else. Mm-hmm. But for the type of offense that the Chiefs ran, Juju Smith Schuster fit in perfectly. So all right. Yeah. All right. Well, perfect. So we're gonna say that the Kansas City Chiefs, hey guys, slow down. This happens every year. Every they, year. Then they get rolling. Like, mm-hmm. let's let's revisit this on week 12. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. For the second topic of the day, I'm going to spit on a little yarn about my MLB. Now, Bryce Harper and the MLB playoffs are still going on. And the Philadelphia Phillies, Bryce Harper's team, have beaten the mighty Atlanta Braves, the MLB's best record of the year, three games to one to advance to the championship round of the playoffs. But there was quite a bit of drama in the middle of the series. Now, the Braves won game two of the series in dramatic fashion with one of the greatest postseason catches that you will ever see from Michael Harris, the third center fielder for the Atlanta Braves, young up and coming kid that Atlanta gave him his bag super early and said, we want you to be here. We want you to be in center. The man does not let balls hit grounds. It just doesn't happen. He made the most ridiculous catch of maybe playoff history, throws the ball back in, Bryce Harper may or may not have done a little bit of base running errors, blunders Hmm. to get doubled up to end the game in dramatic fashion. That evening in the clubhouse, the Atlanta Braves are reported to have been cheering at a boy, Harper, at a boy, at a boy, Harper, at a boy. That was reported out. 
Now, what did Bryce Harper do? Bryce Harper is one of the best players in the game today. And what do best players in the game do? They take that shit personally. He is a him, and he turned out the next day. Oh, you know, he hit two two different 400-foot bombs into the upper decks, led the team to a victory, as well as the following night, stared down the shortstop of the Atlanta Braves as he was rounding third. See, I love that stuff. I love it. I love it. Baseball needs more of that, man. Baseball absolutely needs more of that. Thank you, Ibn. (laughs) Now, let alone the Braves getting shut out, one of the topics that's going on right now is like, now we have the sanctity of the clubhouse and, and, and that reporter should never have reported that. That wasn't a direct comment towards a reporter. That was, you know, what said, what said in the clubhouse stays in the clubhouse. That was unfair. Uh, Bryce Harper uh, reported uh, uh, admits that he absolutely used it as fuel for his fire. When asked about staring down the shortstop, Arcea, he said, yeah, I stared right at him. I stared right into his eyes. When Arcea was asked about it, he said, um, he wasn't supposed to hear that. <laughs> I love it. And baseball needs more of it. Ibn, do you have a favorite, like, bulletin board uh, uh one of the greats using that yeah. um i mean um, a recent one um uh <clears throat> earlier this year when the chiefs played the bengals in the aoc championship game the mayor of cincinnati was talking about uh <clears throat> how joe burrow and the bengals would come to burrowhead stadium you know, it was plus a play on arrowhead stadium uh-huh and, and uh and he was saying like he had to take a uh uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes will have to take a, a DNA test to see if Joe Burrow is his daddy. I'm like, okay, now this is getting personal. <laughs> and then, you know, you do all that stuff. First of all, you first of all, you do the Burrow head stuff. You're already making fun of a stadium, you know, mm-hmm. the sanctity of a stadium. Then you say you gotta do a DNA test to see if he's a, a paternity, see if if his uh he's Burrow's his uh father. I'm like, okay. So then the Chiefs. Okay, they were like, okay, Burrowhead, okay, I see you. And then they, they ended up winning. I'm like, okay, yeah. you're talking all that shit. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> like that like that like like that uh that uh I don't know if you saw that that meme with uh Cat Williams. He's like, should have been talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it was, was kind of like that. So I don't know how players still get wrapped up into giving bulletin board material, particularly to like that segment of dudes. Like you, you in your heart know who that segment of dudes are that you shouldn't be doing that to. And yet people still do it. Uh, My favorites are absolutely Michael Jordan. Uh, I think, I think Tom Brady, I'm going to, I'm going to use this time wisely while Mr. Well, Mr. uh, Well, Mr. Grande is, is not in the building. Uh, I think Tom Brady is one of those dudes that you do not, you do not give him fuel. Don't add anything to his fire. None. Um, as a local, as a local man, I have to say Yadier Molina, man, you do not talk about Yadier Molina. You do not talk about his St. Louis Cardinals and you do not talk about his city. There are multiple times where players have given a less than favorable note about our town to the press. Sometimes as simple as it's a boring city and Yadier Molina will take that shit personally (laughs) uh yeah those are absolutely my favorites and like you said i'm glad you said it baseball needs so much more of this we need more added uh, and it's happening it's happening and i hope slowly we'll start to get more folks tuning in as i told omari before um nobody expects anybody to watch 162 games plus playoffs i am a diehard baseball fan and i watch 45 games Okay. You know, I, t- I, 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 I'm like YouTube, uh, MLB channel does a great job of doing game summaries that are about seven minutes long. I really love those. I love, uh, um, the kind of the Pat McAfee to our baseball is John boy media. Uh, John boy media does great content involving baseball. Yeah, I know about John boy. I like John boy. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I I always recommend those as people to get get into baseball. But yeah, I loved the playoffs and Philadelphia Phillies. Ooh, they are dangerous. They're going to be seeing the Arizona Diamondbacks in the championship series, where in the American League, Houston Astros will be facing the Texas Rangers in an All Texas Championship Series. Okay. So uh, we'll uh, we'll keep you updated next week on uh, what the World Series is looking like. For topic number three, we're going to pass it over to our guest. Now, Ibn, I believe you told me that uh, you have a little bit of a spicy playoff prediction for our NFL. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a bold prediction now. So. I'm a Chiefs fan. Um, The Chiefs have gone to the AFC Championship five years in a row at home. No team has ever done that. Five years in a row at home at the the conference championship. No team in the NFL. So I'm a Chiefs fan. And when Aaron, Aaron Rodgers went out first game of the year, first four plays into the game, and I remember the next day, he said that he'd be ready for the playoffs, time for the playoffs. And I'm thinking to myself, what does this man know that we don't know, man? Like, so is there some kind of script going on or something like that? So I'm thinking to myself, the Jets are going to the, go to the AFC Championship <laughs> against the Chiefs in Kansas City for the Chiefs' sixth year in a row. Now I'm not going to say who wins. I'm I I I'm going to say the Chiefs only because I'm a Chiefs fan. But I'm not going to say the Chiefs are winning outright because I don't want I don't want egg on my face. I'm already already mm-hmm. got enough egg on my face with this. <laughs> but that's what I see in the AFC Championship. I mean, so that's what I see. So if the story is written. Right for Aaron Rodgers to return, to return, yeah. That's it's the story kind of has one ending that it should be, yeah. Uh, yeah. if that happens, I mean, it would be wow, oh, that would be a tragedy. Um, uh, but uh, I mean, I don't, there, there, there happens to be a little video that leaked online this week of Mr. Aaron Rodgers walking through a Jets facility holding crutches in his hand holding them up in the air as this man walked on two two legs oh no i don't know what robot scientists we have now rebuilding uh acls but that's not supposed to be happening <laughs> i don't even know if you're supposed to be on crutches like I think us as laymen's we we hear about ACLs and I'm thinking like you're not putting weight on that for a month. Right, right. You're not putting weight on that for a month. Um This man is walking around with a limp, with a limp. He's tender-footed. But the man ripped his ACL 3 weeks ago. Um Well, well no, no, it was it was it was his Achilles. Or is his Achilles, yeah. 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 Uh uh and so who 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 knows? Who knows? Right, I, I would right. say I would say like I like I said, if the story is written where Aaron Rodgers returns with mobility, like returns as Aaron Rodgers. Yes, yes. I don't want uh, you know, and I don't think he would return with a with like you you know how um Tom Tom came back a little early and it felt like he was really skittish in the pocket. Yeah. He was he was afraid for the for those for those I mean that's 350 pound men oh, yeah, potentially of course, of course. potentially falling over on your shins course, uh, on your legs. Um, but as as but as time went on he was back to being tough. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't yeah. know if I want I don't know if I want that Aaron Rodgers that's easing back into it in my championship game, but if it is Aaron Rodgers Aaron Rodgers it's kind of not it's kind of hard to not bet on that story or wanting to at least see because that would that would be one of the all-time stories yeah that would I immediately even, become one of the all-time stories in, in it, sports. It, it, it really would man i even tweeted it out like like a few days after he went down I'm like watch watch the jets go to the afc championship i really did i don't know what 
I just I just feel that way in my in my mind. I have no idea why, man, but just do. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. All right. So there it is. That you, you said you got a bowl <laughs> playoff choice. And that was a bowl yes. playoff choice, my friend. Yes. So that wraps us up. We got three topics for you this week. The Kansas City Chiefs, don't worry, calm down. Revisit oh, yeah. the offense in week 12. They always oh, yeah. ramp They're, it up. Yeah. Always, always. Our second topic, the MLB playoffs. The Philadelphia Phillies beat the Atlanta Braves, and they're moving on, and they look like the team to beat now in the playoffs. We'll update you on the World Series next week. Third topic, Ibn's crazy bold prediction for the playoffs, and is Aaron Rodgers a superhuman with a robot leg? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Find out next week. Ibn, do you have anything last to say to the people? Just uh, keep on living the good one, the good life. Keep on living the good one. You can check us out here on Feo Grande. I got to do, I just realized I got to do Omari's. I'm not going to do the 10 minutes that he normally does. Uh, You can check us out on Feo Grande YouTube channel. There's a bunch of cool stuff here, including a movie, TV show, talk that we do. You can also catch him on Whatever We Want podcast with the brother Jazz. I don't know if that came through on Zoom. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, and uh, and that's it. Be good to each other, and we'll see you next week. Bye.